and execute. What exactly is execute? Execute, execute is very hard to explain. Okay. Now, some of the things that are hard to explain is the number number one step. Okay. When you call it, you remember that I said that when you call it, it will try to locate the. Let's say you want to execute slash and ls, and uh, let me take my laser. Where's my laser? Okay. So we will change from this blue program to this green program. So that's what I said, okay? And you believe in me, yeah, or no, you will look up the program. And I also said that when this lookup fail, okay, it cannot switch from one, pro one program to another, okay? So let's consider the case that it is successful. And you will observe this diagram, the changing of the code, no problem, this is the illustration. But here, what is this timeline? Again, every time that I draw here means from the perspective of CPU. From the perspective of CPU. So the CPUs, uh, when you look at the code, okay, so we can look at this blue guy and execute it in the area of the user space family. So I give you a orange color, you know, execute it the code, and then you cause it some ball, it will jump in this blue zone, and unlike the Pop example, pop example, create another process. Now you are not creating another process. You are just, you are an actor. You have a script here. You follow the script and act. Now I just replace a new script. So you will be the same guy, but we need another script. Alright? Okay? So this is a switch of script. And looking at this diagram here, you see this doesn't have any difference than uh, the case of print app, right? I call some code, I said, oh, I want to print something on the screen. The same look here. What is the difference is actually happening in the kernel, OK? So in the kernel, well, first of all, the core, when it receives your arguments, it will pass up the arguments in the kernel and, uh, well, try to do one thing first. Search and have this. You will supply the path, right? It will look at the path. It will ask for slash page slash ls. This path, it will look. And let's say it cannot find that LS bar. It will terminate the code, okay, and return, and give you a minus one. Okay, it will return back as minus one, and then tell you what happened using the, what we call error number. Uh, Calvin, this, today you will talk about error number, right? Yeah. So the error number will say, let's say, uh, when you try to open it, oh, per permission denied, okay? Yeah, it will be a disaster, right? Let's say, let's say, let's say, permission denied, okay? Yeah, let's say something like that. So the, you set an error number, all happen in this area. Okay, all happen in this area. Now, let's say the search continues and it successfully finds that thing. Now, something really interesting happens. Okay, so we we are the kernel code now. Okay, we are the CPU code, the kernel code, executing the kernel code. And kernel code, I said that previously, you can ask the kernel to control user space memory. Okay, so it is allowed. But the user space code can control kernel. Okay, so this is a one way to get okay? here. When you go into the kernel, you are invincible. When you go back, you know, okay? So now you have CPU, okay, kernel code. You will clear all these things. Okay? So what is the meaning? Some, some of the meanings are, I'm not going to say, you will clear, okay? Local variables. Why do you clear local variables? Okay, so let's imagine you're running a main, okay, there is a main function, you have local variables, okay, so this kind of local variables no longer makes any sense in your new program, your new program has its own main, right, so it will be better described, this is one of all the things, math, no, okay, so on, although you already fed off a 10 gigabyte of memory in your old program, uh, using your old program, okay? using your old program, you are that process, you manage so many memories, sorry, you switch to another program, give up on memory. Okay? So it will be clear, or I am not say clear, but the error. The error no longer belongs to you. Okay? Then what is this do? This do is a, uh, I every time I keep on mentioning in different weeks, right? I said that when you compile a program, you are actually hard coding something, and the thing that you hard code at least will be these two guys. Code, yeah, you generate the code, so that's why it's hard code. And the global variables, it won't change, right? Think about it while you're executing a program. You cannot change the number of global variables. Your hand is always standing to death 
of your problems. Okay? So it will be better to do another thing instead of clear to be set based on the new code. Okay, the new code load it in, load it in, and the place load in is the code itself, as well as the set of code variables you need. Any problem you want to ask? Yeah, this is a little bit of uh, uh, facts. Okay. And this fact is uh, maybe no, some guys may not be able to, to the public gen, uh, general audience here. Okay, and as well as one thing that controlled by the kernel is uh, register value. Will we set them all? Okay, we set them all. Let's say that oh you're you're working on some tasks. Okay, before the system call, no, you un undo all things. We set it to to some value based on your program. Then the end. <laughs> The end. Yeah, no. you, you can see this is so simple, right? We set it. We set all memories, switch to the new code, we load the new code, load the global variable, and kickstart the main function. That's all. Okay? Any problem? No? No? Then it will come into the task of a very important call. What is it's not important, I would say, is exit. Okay? So what is this library? This library, I think it kind of makes sense, okay? So you have a parent process, you create a child process. Actually, you call way system call, it means that this guy, this parent, is waiting, okay? And when this guy dies, it will notify the parent. This is what we said in the last week, okay? But what exactly is doing behind the screen is not easy. Behind the screen, you will find, uh, okay, I'm going to switch, by, by looking at it from a CPU perspective, okay, you will find this quick number. Let's say you have multiple ports, okay, the multiple ports place is a record like that, you are playing in parallel, okay, and remember, every core can touch the kernel code, maybe you have a time that a, a particular number of time phone process is touching kernel code, okay, this is allowed. And here is the parent. The parent try to wait for the termination of the child, so you can waste some call. And I here maybe talk about things that is suspended. Suspended is not asking the service on the CPU and waiting for one event. And the event is this guy. What is that? This is terminated. Okay. So this is something that you may find it, uh, a little bit strange. Okay. I mentioned a system call. But I never meant to return zero. Okay? So in the main function, it is called return zero. And I can carry that actually, uh, this is kind of like magic really, okay? because you didn't touch it. Okay? So when the main function return, where it should go? Okay? So it will go to some place in the GNU C library. Okay? And the GNU C library eventually collects it for you. Okay? So this code will be guaranteed. Will be guaranteed. Okay, and of, of course, uh, under some scenario like a segmentation port, okay, it's the same treatment here. Okay, but it's not using a uh, system call. So, and other exception I won't mention. Okay, I only mention the normal case, you would call extend. And when you call extend, it will notify the parent. Now, looking at it in, in true CPU manner, so this is uh, kind of a kind of a break, split your brain here too, okay? Yeah. One is looking at a parent, one is looking at a child. Now, how to notify this guy? Okay, and of course, it's through the kernel. Through the kernel, the kernel has one only one piece of memory and one piece of code. Okay, so this is shared area. So these two guys using the shared area inside the kernel to communicate. Okay. Now let's see how they do it. First, okay, we will talk about this relationship, the parent-child relationship. Okay. And I hard code is one three four one three five so that you kind of understand the things. They're, they're close together. This is being created and needed to pop this guy, okay? I'm sorry, this is pop this guy. This guy pop and create this guy. Okay, I, I make it, I make it kind, of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of wrong. Okay? So here we will do the following. First, this guy call extent. What is the meaning of call extent? Okay, you want to terminate yourself. Okay? So now for the, for the first time, I will tell you why, okay? Some people tell you are always open a file and close. And based on your experience, you go and have close when you are when you do have open. You should know. Right? And you find that yeah no damage at all. Yeah, yeah then you don't follow this type of thing more. Okay? So don't do that. Uh. Here I will explain why because when you go access some the kernel will first look into this uh 
array of open files and close them one by one. Okay, close them one by one automatically. Okay, so it means that yeah, if my process terminate, okay, then someone will do do the housekeeping things, close all the files. Now, why we don't don't recommend you to do this? Okay, usually you you want to make sure to tell you. Okay, you should. Don't tell you, now you are free now. If, you don't, if I don't tell you, then you don't need to know once. Or you, you don't have any chance to know. It's because of this guy. Array, okay? This array is hard code. Hard code, okay? Usually, uh, you can change it, okay? You can change it, but the hard code value is 1024. 1024 in size, okay? So imagine that you have a yeah, run a demon, run a server, running for uh, two months, okay? You keep on opening files, but you forget to close. Okay? And this array only has 1024 slots. You keep on open, forget to close, keep on open, forget to close. Then this array will do some steps. Then you will find a very interesting error to happen. Okay? It will say uh, not enough file descriptor or, or, or bad file descriptor, whatever. Okay? It's talking about uh, or resource resource you saw something like that. Very interesting errors pop up and you'll find that ah is it because I type in some raw file name, okay? Because you didn't check, right? You just find that oh app open return now. Okay? But actually it's because of this area is set up. Okay? So this is not a joke. I found one student doing that, okay? During his time doing FIP, okay? His boss cannot solve this problem. Okay? Or was his boss from the teaching over so yeah, it's because I teach over so that guy can ask him, hey, what happened to my program? Okay, first I do not. Okay, then I ask him, hey, why don't you look up the error number and check? And then we understand, oh, you forgot to add close. Okay, yeah, that, that's the big problem. Huh? So remember, this is a no no. Don't keep file open without any use. If you don't use it, close it to free one slot here. Okay, so this is a way of open file. Now this is a real open file and coexist automatically to my housekeeping for you, the kernel. Then what's next? Next is about memory. Memory be allocated. Okay, all memory will be allocated. You mail for 10 gigabytes of it, all done. Uh, mail, uh, local variable, local variable, all done. Okay, so because you don't need it. And when it's all gone, it will become free memory, other process can use it now. Easy. What's next? Next is hard to understand. Next is this guy. Yeah, this is something, right? Yeah. Uh, not 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 that exactly, okay? What is this status now? The status is like uh, uh how can I say? It don't have any terms, right? Because at the end it's coming. It don't have any memory. So very environmental friendly something, right? Don't put so many code. Don't have so many memory. And because it don't have any code, so even don't touch the CPU, right? You go to the CPU, oh, I don't know. Oh, sorry, I don't know. No, this right, okay? So very environmental thing, but it just keep there inside the kernel uh, double list of uh, processes. And we call it zombie, okay? A zombie. And the zombie, the design of the zombie, I cannot think through the history, maybe I know it's not old enough, okay? Why don't why don't we destroy that practice, okay? Actually, this practice is happening all around. I don't know Windows, okay? Windows don't have any, anything to do with the software. Right? It's not the software. It's not, it's don't open anything. I don't know, all right? We, um, Linux, Mac, Unix, uh, some, we all Unix also behave like this. They keep a uh, lonely structure here to hold that PID, and that PID won't release. Always, okay? Now, what is the problem? The problem is, you, if you understand this uh, a real open file problem, and actually we have an other similar problem here, is some test on me, and okay, and your know, PID, and don't believe it. Today, we will show this demonstration. What happens if I use up all the PIDs? Okay? Today, one of them will Now, let's go on with this topic, and this is already the end of the system call with one pending task. And that pending task is multiplication, right? After I become a zombie, I, I have to tell my mother, hey, I become a zombie, please kill me. Yeah, I don't know, should the head or should the head, I don't know. Okay. 
uh, tell the mother. And telling the mother is something that uh, today we would cover what we call signal. Okay? The signal then is a signal or you can call it a flag, okay? A variable. They turn on the variable, okay? And a variable originally is a missing between the parent and actually this notification is to it's inside this kernel space memory. So that's why I said that the two processes talk together using shareable memory. It's here. The Code of said will ask this parent, hey, I I know that your child is died, okay? It's like now I set a flag on your process, which we call sick child. Yeah, I write it this way because it's a variable name, okay? It's a variable of um this is defined, they define it right. It defined as this name and it's called sick child. Okay? And this sick child is just a flag. And when a parent know about that, hey, I got a flat inside the kernel, then it will automatically do something. Okay? And what is that thing? It's the waste of some hall. Well, I mean volume of waste of some hall. Now let's uh, summarize what we have known about the existing system hall. This existing system hall is crazy, right? We have three steps. Clean up all the air in the space in the kernel, including the open files. Uh, um, later on, you will know more about the kernel space memory. The use of memory all on. Last task is to set sick child signal flag on the parent process. The parent now knows about the death of the child. Okay? Now, what's next is the cooperation, right? Go back to a few slides, the cooperation here. Okay? When the parent knows about it, the signal has arrived, what will happen? Okay, so this is something uh, quite boring. Okay, so it's boring cache. The boring cache is, yeah, we know that it's a signal. And this guy, before all this has happened, what happened here is kind of easy to understand. Hey, it's just put, put him into the sleep, and if someone give me this flag, I will not. Okay, and the process, I can go fast forward a bit, okay, because why? It's just a, just a very routine thing. The routine thing is this guy called waits. Okay? Maybe before the child will sit, maybe after, I don't care. Okay? So this code has issued the, the, the code itself, setting one very special thing we call signal handler. Okay? Today we'll talk about more about a signal handler in the signal chapter. The signal handler is, is a function, actually. It's a function pointer. And a function is waiting for this flag. When this flag turn on, please execute that particular function. And that function is the zombie killing function. Okay? It's a silver bullet to kill zombies. Okay? So it's just a register. Okay? I register it. Okay? Of course there's some checking, like uh, before you want to register for it, I will look, I'm not I waste some call body to check whether this parent has child or not. If not, I don't allow you to register it and immediately same, same, same outside the curl and return on this one. Okay? Now, let's say he has a child here, so it will allow you to register this, and after registration, go to sleep. Go to sleep. And this sleep is not a normal sleep, it is not this, okay? We have uh, two types of sleep here. Okay? So this is a command, the command sleep, okay? So you can see the chapter one of the main page. Okay, chapter one, bracket one, and you can uh, say, oh, sleep one, and then wake up, okay? And we also have the, oh no, oh yeah, here. The Unix standard dot H, okay, you have to include it, and we can sleep for, um, I mean, uh, whatever minutes or whatever seconds up to you, you put it in your program and you go to sleep. Okay, it is not this sleep, okay? That sleep only wake up based on one criteria. The criteria is your child dies. Okay? If your child dies, I wake up. So it seems that if your child is going into a long one loop, forever loop, okay, then this guy will wake up. Okay? So it's it's even trippy. Even trippy sleep. Okay? So here is going to sleep very boring. And when the child, sick child, is set on that particular process, I said it's turn on the flag, okay? When it turn on the flag, it will invoke this signal handler, and this signal handler is just a function to kill the solving, 
Okay? So in your assignment one, this is assignment one, if you want to keep the system zombie free, you have to call weights. Weight is the zombie killer. If you don't call weights, it won't remove any zombie. Today we will have this demonstrator. Right? And then play it out using the single handler code. That is a function pointer pointing to this code. Execute it, destroy all the things as if we listen that PID. Now when you listen the PID, then you will later can create another process code to be high, but without that, maybe without that current coverage. Yeah. Okay? So this is it. And last we will have this return value. Okay, this return value is something that uh, we didn't say uh, in the previous uh, chapter uh, The previous file only tell you hey, there's a wave ID, the wave ID will return, but actually it's a return value. And the return value says which PID that is that was solving and was killed by you. Okay, and what is the problem? Why we need this PID? Any idea? Maybe we don't we don't need to have it, right? Where's the idea? How about we have multiple child? We have ten child, okay? Then if I want to know which child dies, or whether all child dies, or children dies, okay? If all children die, and let's say I have ten, ten child, okay, I call wait PID ten times, I will receive different PIDs. Okay, I will receive different PIDs and I collect them more. Right. Oh, now I know all that PID belonging to the previous fault call. The previous fault call tell me those PID and the match. Then we know that all my child is done. Okay? So there's the use of this PID. Very useful. Okay, I tell you, very, very useful. Okay? So how about another, another scenario? So this is called case one. Okay, the case one summary. Very easy to understand. You die, say the sick child, and you execute the wave PID. Uh, this is the first half of the wave PID call. The second half is a killer zombie, so the two halves are complete. Now, what is the case two? It's case one. Case two is like this. What will happen here? I set a child here, and I don't know why the parent is executing something really important without calling wave PID. So we will have two side effects. The two side effects, first, the side effect here is you cannot find this wave called suspend. Yeah, the last time I explained that, right? You find a parent calling a wave, but the child already died before you call, you will find suspend. This is side effect number one. Side effect number two is even more important. Here, you find that uh, it's, it's clear, right? Uh, I remember some uh, some projector cannot see this gray color. Right? Yeah, this is gray color here. What does this gray color mean? I artificially write it there, okay? Because I said that this graph is always talking about the CPU point of view, and something won't take up any CPU time. Won't take up any CPU time. This will already die. You have any children? You have any even the memory, okay? Now, what does this mean? It means that I just prolong this uh, projector slide to tell you that, hey, actually this zombie is kind of living in the system for some time until you call the waste some more. Okay? So this is maybe the sum of the problem in your assignment one submission. You don't call waste as soon as possible. Then you will create a short period of time that you allow some zombie to stay in the system. Of course, our checking is not that straight. Our checking will say that up to level second level, I don't have any any zombie in the system. No, I cannot even pack it. Okay, we will only just uh, look at the terminal, okay, refresh it on second by second to see whether you have zombie or not. That's all. Okay. So what's happened here is actually well, go to the kernel level. Very easy to understand. The zombie already created long ago. Already created long ago. Now you call waste support. I don't break the code in two parts. The previous case, I have two parts. The first half, set up something, the uh, event handler, uh, the signal handler, and then I go to save. The second half is I receive that signal, I wake up. Now, there's no two half anymore. It's become one, okay? 
When I call the waves, I immediately already find the flag is being set. Ori originally, it should, shouldn't be any flag here, but the flag already set because you, the, the child value for you call waves. Then the signal handler will immediately call, and the software will be immediately killed, and you will find the waves just spend a little time for the kernel and return. Okay? So, this is uh, results. Okay? Very short time and return. Okay? Any question you want to ask? This is the following part. Okay? Not exciting at all. But you have to know about it. Okay? Because when you know about it, you can explain the difference between wild form and wild form. If you know about it. Okay? So we go to the exciting part now. Okay, so there's a short summary over exit. Okay. And if you really want to generate some interesting thing like the zombie, okay, you can do this in Linux. I found it in, in Mac it's another thing. Okay. If you want to detect when you have a zombie, you can do this. PS anyways is to print out all the process details. Whether it's running, whether it's sleeping, terminated, suspended, whatever things you want, you want to see over there, including this flag called default. D function. Okay, no function at all. But it occupies a PID, okay? And I should have put PI PID verify show here, right? Verify the results on the course, okay? But uh, yeah, I really don't think it. Now what's next? Next is about a program. This is about a program. I give you one to two minutes. Answer me the following questions. Usually, when you see a program with fault, immediately you have to do one thing. Tell me which fault is parent, which fault is child. I mean, based on child. Okay. Then the second question is. Uh, I hope that you understand this. Okay. I'm not asking for this. Okay. I just uh, write a write a very long C code here. Oh, I will wish for enter. Okay. And if you don't understand that she did as a get child, okay? Yeah, then then it will it will, it will be very easy to understand. So this is not the second question. The second question is you know that which part is parent, which part is child. Tell me who terminate first. Tell me who terminate first. Okay? Then we have two angles here. Okay? Although you can already execute the code that I share with you, but I want you to think about it. Why I set up this to filter? Because like before I type an enter to get past this get child, something will happen. Tell me what will you see? Will you see a zombie or no zombie after line six? After line six. How about before line six? Okay, before line six, will I find a zombie? Will I find any terminated child or parent? Also, for this wait call, can you successfully remove any software? Yeah, talk among yourself. I'll give you one minute. Yeah. Remember, look for a parent part, look for a child part. Tell me who die first. Will I create any software before I say and after I say? So the line can is not useful, right? I just block the program to see the change. Yeah, I'll give you one minute. Yeah, discuss among yourself. Ask your neighbor. If your neighbor is it's not clear, okay, maybe teach him. Yeah. Oh, by the way, first of all, how many don't understand that? What? What I'm doing on my phone. Yeah, if you don't understand what is on my phone, okay, Kevin is here. Ask him to teach you a bit better work over this uh, assignment statement. Okay.
Okay? First question. I will ask who is child, okay? Just keep your answer in your mind. Who died first? Or both who died, okay? They, they live forever well, happily. In the Olympics, okay? And won't be, won't, won't be killed, okay? Who died first? Who think that it is a parent died first? Yeah, there's a lot of ways. Child, child died first. They live forever well, happily. <laughs> Only a few, a few think that uh, child died first, okay? So we don't care, they don't care, life four. Okay, so I just uh, made a short hand. Actually, this means uh, I assigned a PID, okay? After the box, I assigned a A to the variable PID, and different process get different things. Different process get different things. If I have a child, I will read this call assigning zero. Okay, child assigned zero, then if zero, so I don't need to do anything, then return zero. So it is the case for the child. How about for the parent? Parent will execute the clock and the return value is the child's name. Okay, so the child's name is no longer uh, uh, zero, so if it's uh, not zero, so for C, it is true. So it's true that you explain this part, I get a case here at line 6. So you will block it from uh, going further. Block it from going further, so it will stay there, wait for my keyboard input. Now, so parent life forever without my enter, child dies in this view created. When you create it, and it, because of it, it else go to return zero, dies in this way. Now, what is the effect here? Okay, so if you if you cannot get my idea during the lecture, you can go to the repo here. Go to the repo. I have a readme. The readme has already described how I will demonstrate this program. I have to set up two terminals in order to look at the chain of the uh, process synthesis. So I will open to you guys. So if you cannot follow me, go to the repo. The readme has clear explanation. So this is terminal one, this is terminal two. Okay? So let me make it bigger. For the terminal two, I can make it smaller. Because this guy is only for the code execution. Okay? So I will just execute the code here. And in the other side, I will show commands to show the product status. Okay, so first of all, execute. And this statement is printed from the parent. The parent knows the PID, okay? So this 55073 is actually coming from this printf. Oops, this printf. The live 5 printf. It's hard to highlight in the PDF, huh? Live 5. It just print. What's next? Next, I go to here. Take a look using PSAUX. Now, PSAUX is a very ugly call. It will just dump out everything. Yeah, lots of things get dumped out. Uh, the root, the root, the TY one. Okay, so they are the login name. Create a process. I don't know. Three seven seven doing something bad. Okay, so this is not good. So I in a in here, okay, I give you another command, okay, call ps minus l, minus l is the long list of the ps, not aux, minus p means I want to specify the pid, okay, so I will use this call, okay, and copy this pid here, of 1234. So this is a bunch of things that pop up, okay, and here, it's actually corresponding to this column. Okay, yeah, you use an imagination, okay? I don't have wide enough screen here. Okay, so this S is actually corresponding to this column. This is a column specifier. S means the state of the process. Set means solving. Okay, so it is solving state for the plus. Plus means that it is a four one process, okay? It is an executing problem. Let's, let's take a look at the terminal. The terminal is still there, okay? So it's a wonderful one. 
Okay. So this is a zombie, and it is executing without any user uh, user time or system time because it don't have any code. Okay. As as long as I just kill it, one is being uh, created. So it will see the time that it requires the CPU attention is zero. Close to zero actually is field, right? You have to call it save, call something like that, okay? So it's a fair field, so you will see zero, 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 zero here, five zero here. It means that it doesn't need any uh, attention on the CPU anymore. Okay, so this is a zombie. Now, what's next? Next, I will go back to the code. I will press and enter so that I will get past line 6. I'll get past line 6, press and enter. Then, after line 6, what will happen? Who is this the way Kill all the zombie belongs to this parent. Let's go. Enter. Okay. So it's finished executing the wait, and I use this command to look again. Nothing. Okay. The zombie is gone. So this is a very strong pull, right? The zombie is in the system. Okay. Whenever you create a process, you forgot to call wait. It will stay there. Yeah, you know, I'm going to demonstrate this. is stay there until you call wait. It will be there. Okay? When call wait is gone. Very, very important thing. Okay? And of course, I just uh, put a block here. Put a block here so that you can have a chance to look again. Okay? The parent is still there. But the parent has killed all the uh, all, 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 uh, those uh, child workers that's gone, right? I will say all. Oh. Alright? Any question you want to ask? Or any modification that you wish me to do it over the program? No? What? What? I can't hear. What is time? Before license. Okay, so one classmate wish me to demonstrate this. Before, before the waste, okay, what happened if I terminate the parent? Will that child stand there forever? Good question, huh? Okay, I need to change a bit. Ah, yeah. Oh, so sorry. I shouldn't need to change. Sorry. Okay. So again, run it. Right, come on. And change this PID. Oh, yeah. In the this PID. Take a look. Okay. We have a zombie here. Our classmate suggests me to do Control C. Okay. So what should it be? The the process gone. Okay. So, good question, why? It's covering something that I plan to talk about in part four, okay? And we call it, um, what is this? We call it, this operation is your parent is gone, okay? So all your child is gone. No one cares, you, okay? You, you, you're you not being uh, monitored by any parent. So when you die, you will become a zombie that no one can kill you, okay? So in Linux, in Mac, in Unix, we have uh, what we call the wee parent operations. Some parent will pick you up. Okay. Later on, we will talk about this in part four. Don't worry. But this is a good question. We will have some trouble if you don't don't understand. Hey, what will go on? And actually, we will have a grandmother in the system to take care of it. And the grandmother PID is number one. PID one. Who is this guy? This guy in Linux, uh, in Linux is called init. In Mac, it's called launch D. No one can kill it. No, no one. Even I, the computer cannot kill it. Okay, it's uh, inside the kernel code. The kernel will say that you cannot kill it. And when you want to kill it, we turn on, we turn minus one. Okay. 
a very powerful guy. This guy would do the clean up things if your parent dies. Okay, it's just something extra. You don't need to know it until part four. Part four, okay? Okay, anything you want me to do other demonstration? Okay, so then we will have the great demonstration using this machine. Okay? The importance and the fun in knowing about all this. Okay? It is to understand what exactly is a fog bomb. We have two kinds of fog bomb. One guy is to do wind damage, <coughs> creating a hierarchical wind, hierarchical grade, using one process, create two other process, and two other process create another level of the tree. Okay? So another one is what we call a denial of surface. A simple denial of surface impact based on PID. Okay? And what is my purpose? My purpose is to use the previous thing that you just dealt If I have a child, I want to let it die immediately when I create it. It will keep a process in the system and solve it. I want to create a zombie factory using this. Why is this program is zombie factory? Yeah, this is a you and I will take start that process in my EPC after one minute. Don't run in any machines except I will saw. So I won't do it. You know, they, they need us to have an Apple experience, right? I want to ex experience okay, with something. Why this is a zombie factory? Why this program can, can produce endless number of zombies? I give you one minute. Remember, you have to look at this program by spotting what happened for the parent, what happened for the child. Don't simply look at this one and oh, wow, 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 oh, that's all. Oh, by the way, it's all right. Uh, every year I have to explain this, okay? If you don't see, you know that what this semicolon means, okay? Yeah, if you're, if you're working on Python, so you don't know what it is. I don't know this semicolon. So this semicolon means the empty statement. So this loop, this loop has empty body. This while loop evaluates this result, when this result is true or false. <coughs> if this is true, go on. But the while body is empty. Okay? So we have a wet empty while loop. And this empty while loop, the evaluation of uh, whether I should continue with the loop is a fault call. Anybody want to give an answer? What happened to every child in this forest? When go in the wild loop? No. Then what happened? They died. Hmm? They died. I mean, they will go to the return state. They, they will return zero. And because? Because the fault value will be changed. Yes. Because fault will return zero for every child. Okay? Fault always becomes zero. And when fault becomes zero, you know it is child, then it will immediately go outside of this wild loop and die. Any waste call in this program? No, no waste call. So it becomes something. How about for parent? Parent will always receive zero or non zero. Non zero, right? So we receive non zero. And if we receive non zero, that means that the loop should go on. And every time they want to check when the loop should go on, another fault. Fault and fault and fault and fault. There's an endless zombie factory. Okay? And now, I will demonstrate what exactly it is. Welcome to launch in your MacBook. <laughs> Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, in, in important warning, okay? Even though you are in BA faculty, in SE department, 
I H department, math department, I don't know where. I do for fun. No matter which department you are in, don't do it. So for some some things which is not department, <laughs> do think about it. Okay. <laughs> Our faculty, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't do it in the library, okay? <laughs> okay, so this is, a, this is a screenshot that I create myself, okay? So, this is the end of this, this uh, part. This part is important. You should now understand the working, in the working of the kernel, then you will know what, what will happen if you do something bad, okay? Something bad means that because of mistake or not, I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is the outcome. Now, what's next? Next will be another part. Uh, I forgot to put up the code, but the code itself is very easy to type. Okay, so I will do it. Um, I mean tonight. Tonight I will put up the code in a uh, repository. Okay, so let's have a break.